All right, we'll keep it uh, short and sweet. Uh, not a whole bunch to talk about. A couple interesting days to start off the new year. Um, you know, we talk a lot of times how uh, the action's been uh, confusing, right? To say the least at times. But, you know, we may not like the action right now, but it's, it's pretty clean cut. You know, it's pretty clean cut in, what, in what's been taking place. Um, and today kind of came to a head. You have rates obviously um, have bounced. They've been, you know, they've been in a range. Like every time uh, they start to push higher, I'm talking about interest rates, right? Uh, yeah, you, you hear the uh, inflation talk, you hear um, how growth is not the place to be, you know, the whole rhetoric that comes behind it. Um, and every time, when, right, exactly. Every time uh, they start to push, you know, from the bottom of the range towards the top of a range, um, you know, you start to heat it, you hit, it starts to heat up. And then the total opposite when, um, you know, we hit that top of the range and start to retrace, um, all of a sudden it doesn't matter, right? It just disappears. Uh, people at a point in time, they're, they're buying growth stocks like they forgot completely about what rates uh, may be doing in the future and the concern about it. So, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't know what the hell is going on. You got some of the smartest minds on the street that have been baffled by interest rates. Uh, so I'm not going to try to sit here and figure it out, you know. And for those of you who've been trading for a while, right, since the 2008 debacle, we've been through this before. You know, the same thing was being said back then. Um, it is a little different now, starting to look a little different now, um, especially on the on the fiscal side. You know, there's, there was a lot more velocity behind the money printing out there. Uh, so maybe it ends up resulting in uh, inflation that sticks around. Okay, but uh, for those of us who have been around the block, we've heard this before, the concern about inflation, and ultimately uh, it ends up being um, the deflation that, that becomes the biggest concern. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. The point I'm trying to make is we don't, no reason to rack our brain um, because whether you think you may have a, a good idea about it, you probably don't, you know, it's a guessing game. Um, what the best we can do at this point, right, and what we've been doing um, amidst the frustration out there of this rotation and a lot of these growth names, uh, especially some of the smaller growth names being out of favor and in Dow trends for quite a while, um, you know, we look to try to take advantage even tactically when we start to see those initial signs that a rotation may be taking place, right? So it's pretty obvious we've been seeing it here come the start of the new year, right? For whatever reason, uh, rates are starting to push higher. Money is coming out. Uh, again, I don't know how aggressive it is. It's been aggressive in a lot of these high multiple names for a while, right? They've been out of favor for quite a bit. Um, some of these hyper growth story names. Uh, but, you know, we may see some, uh, some of the money come out of even the larger tech names that honestly are a bit too crowded now anyway, and that would make total sense, right? Uh, so that's, that's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking to see if this rotation uh, has any, any legs to it, because what, what's been happening, and this has been uh, the tough that's been uh, the part of, the, of it all that's been most confusing and most irritating. One day it would look like we'd get rotation, right, into the banks, into the cyclicals. And then two days later, that would be the worst place to be, right? They would sell, sell them off and they end up right back to where uh, they started a couple of days ago. Um, and it's been a, a more violent rotation every couple of days. Uh, we really, you don't want to swing trade through any of that, right? Because that's where you get chopped up and it's a complete disaster. Uh, so you know, we want to try to get a feel out there for some of these rotations that may, like I said, have a little punch over an intermediate term behind them. Um, so that's what I would be looking for. This rotation, this round looks a bit different. 
Um, a lot more names are involved, right? Even though they're tattooing Ford, right? Ford has been, you see what they've done? Ford is the poster child of the rotation, right? That's where all the Al goes, um, right? Sweeper, momentum players. That's where they all go initially when they're rotating out of growth and NASDAQ. Yeah, it's almost like, right? It's Apple, Tesla on one side. And Ford, you know, GM a lot smaller scale, but uh, Ford on the other side, right? So, and you can see how quick these things just erupt. Like this Ford, every time we've seen a little rotation into these cyclicals would be one of the few cyclicals that would see any sort of flow, you know, throughout this sideways action. And, you know, today this is a monster move. I mean, for a name... You, you guys don't need me to tell you. you. guys, we don't play Ford because you never would see moves like this. You know? You would never see a move like this. It would take ages. Uh, so now it's got a little juice behind it for whatever reason. EVs, or, but it's become the poster child of the rotation. So now let's see what happens. Let's see. The point I'm getting at is we want to see the flow trickle down. Um, yeah, an upgrade, right? Didn't Boba upgrade them too? Uh, we want to see the flow trickle down into the other stuff, okay? And like I said, we're, we started to see that a little bit this go around. Even before today, um, we're starting to see some half-decent-looking action in some of, the, some of the other side names. I'll give you an example. We all have a bad taste in our mouth, right? But like Trip, right? That was when, if you go back and think about it, like that was when a lot of these travel names, it started. They couldn't get out of their own way for quite a while, right? You knew I was going to bring it up because, you know, we really haven't seen any, anything that resembles good looking flow since. Um, you know, so now you got, you know, I'm not crazy of the spot because it's, it's off a little bit of a move here into a niner. Uh, but yeah, this thing's been beaten up. What's wrong with this chart? Ta -ha -ha, look at this. Okay. So this is the pain that's been going on in a lot of these things, right? You got Ford, which if you were to look at probably the best uh, play out there, that's had probably the most consistent flow out of all these cyclical names. And then you go to these travel names that, you know, some of them look like this. Yeah, ex exactly. And small caps is, see, small caps is another thing. Like small caps would benefit off this rotation. I th again, the problem with small caps, you have too much speculation in that index right now. You know, there's too many speculative names there. And I get it, small caps are more speculative, but I'm talking about you have highly speculative names there. And with the market pricing in the Fed tightening here, right, the more speculative the stuff is, the worse it is. It's out of favor. So that's where the Russell gets tricky. What they're going to need to do is they need, they're, they're, we're going to need to find small cap names, right, Russell 2000 names on the value side. That, that's what we're going to need to look for. Uh, and that's what, what's going to need to push the Russell higher, in my opinion, right? So banks, um, you know, whatever sector, just they're going to be in the small cap camp and likely in the value camp, uh, aside from growth, right? So that, that's what I would look for on the Russell. The Russell should benefit. The Dow, you know, you looked around, like I, I glanced at Twitter today. Um, you would have thought the market was crashing at one point. And, you know, I looked at my screen, ES was down like seven. The Dow was still up like 300, but it was those NASDAQ names, right? Even the big guys who were getting, uh, taking a lick. So we probably see that the gap there close, right? It's not going to be, shouldn't, more than likely not going to be that easy. Um, but little by little, we should see that gap close. So, if it's not going to be that easy and it's going to be more gradually, right? What, what's that mean for us? That means exactly what we were looking for on the growth side, 
right, coming out of the summer, we want to see these names get bought on any pullbacks and dips, right? That's that's what we want to see. We've been seeing it in some of the studs on this side of rotation, right? You can count on one hand probably all the studs. The hotels, right? This is what we talked about Sunday, guys, so it may sound familiar. Right, this Hilton, every dip, up, down, sideways, crooked, they seem to buy it, right? Marriott, same thing. There are not a lot of names that fit that bill where we've seen consistent flow. So now what we want to see is we want to see that spill over. If this rotation is for real and it's going to have legs, it's not going to be just Ford that catches all the action. You know what I mean? We're going to see it trickle down and spill over into a variety of names that have been dead money for a long time. Okay. So I think the, the, the tough part here um, until we see otherwise is a lot of times we get confused with uh, underbelly cyclical and underbelly growth. All right. And they're two very different things right now. Um, one's really out of favor and there really hasn't been any sign of a turn yet. Um, and, you know, the other has been more in consolidation than anything else. IWD, right? I think the last um, strong battle rotation coming out of the, uh, coming off the election, this, I remember them sweeping this DW. That's where I remember the symbol, IWD. Exactly. Exactly. Right? So, and again, I don't think... You know, guys, I really don't think it's going to be as drastic as we're used to, you know, I think, and that could be a problem because I think people are going to get caught in some of these tech names a lot more than they're used to, you know, I don't think it's going to be as drastic. Like, I don't think these tech names end up falling out of bed. If they do, it's, it's going to take down everything. You understand? It's going to take down the whole market. Nothing's going to survive if these things roll over and violently sell off. You know, um, it's going to take down everything, and then they'll probably come in and buy up uh, all these cyclical value names anyway. But they'll be paying beforehand. All right. So I just wanted to start this um, this webinar off. Uh, something I'm keeping an eye out. Uh, something we've been seeing in the flow. Right. Like today, I, I made the point flow wise right we've been complaining about just the, the bets in general out there the sweeper activity in general it's been, been anything but broad right it's the same names that catch the best action and you know today we saw probably just as good as flow as we've been seeing throughout this whole you know last couple of weeks months as long as it's been you know there's like i'm gonna post it um when i get off this there's a top bet list there are some names on there and, you know, you want to use those names and look, if you don't like them already, see if, you know, they, they come in and, and support these things and buy these things on, on dips. And especially like a lot of these names were up, right? Like if you didn't play for it and get in the middle of that today, you know, there's no reason to go in and buy it tomorrow after the remove like today, right? So you want to see these names, you want to see sweeper activity come into the selling uh, and the profit taking when it shows up. You know, uh, Pfizer child's vaccine. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I, like, I don't think any of um, this, uh, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, guys. I think they stuck a fork in the Omicron virus sphere a couple of weeks back. Remember we had the conversation, right? The news was hideous. Um, it really looked scary. And you had all the travel and leisure names and everything green. Like, you know, if I blindfolded you, you would have thought these things were crashing. That's how bad the noise was. Um, and that was a couple of weeks back. That told us, like, the fear of Omicron into the market and the price action was done. And if you do see anything selling over the short term, it's a buying opportunity, right? So I think that's, you know, the market digested that, it's gone. Right? Yeah, it's accepted now. Exactly. So... It's just the market factors it in. What the market's telling us now, it looks ahead, and it's telling us that this Omicron virus is going to pass, and 
players are going to start focusing on the reopening of the economy again, right? And when you're when players are fo re, uh, focusing on the uh, reopening, that's cyclical, right? They want to own things that are tied to the economy, right? All those things again that are tied to the economy. So, and that's what we we've kind of seen a blend between that and a continuation of tech, big tech flow uh, that's been going on for a while now. You know, so I'd be more careful uh, on the big tech end, right? I would look to just buy weakness there, if anything, and I would try to focus on the rotation and for new names. Uh, and let's see, right? Again, let's see. I don't, I'm not saying that we're going to see, I can't predict the future, right? And I don't think we've seen enough to determine that this is going to continue. Uh, so I'm saying, let's see. If we see them start to pick off a couple, you know, new names in the cyclical camp, uh, that's where we should be looking, all right? So that's that's individual names, breadth of the market, that falls into, the, into that category, all right? More importantly, for those of you who just pay attention to the market and are trading uh, ES, SPX tactically or um, SPX options, uh, the only thing that right now is on the playbook is pretty simple, right? And that's why we've been paying close attention to it on the McElliott, Charlie McElliott end, and um, the dude from Goldman who watches the flows. What's driving buyers now in the just the overall market in that sense, are January flows, okay? Uh, there's been a chart that from Goldman that's been going around. Let me see, I got it right here. I'll just post it. That you guys probably saw me post a couple times over the past week. Let's see, it's right here. Okay, here you go. All right? Okay, so why why does it matter? And again, if you guys are interested in this stuff, you know, we've been looking at the notes. Uh, Numura, Charlie McElliott talks about it a lot and the positioning going into it, which is even more important. Um, a, a flow guru at a Goldman, um, and this is his chart, talks about it even more. Uh, so we do pay attention to it if you're interested in, in this stuff. Oh, but you're coming off a surprisingly good year, meaning that player, a lot of people weren't prepared uh, for a strong year like we had. One, they weren't positioned for it either. Two, so what usually happens is, um, and this happened in 2000, was that 2017 into 2018, I think it was, okay? You basically had money front run the January, big influx of January flows coming into the market, okay? Um, and then what happened after that news came out about the amount of money and everybody was oohing and on about how much money came in to buy stocks, uh, it was a sell the news event. Right. So the market ended up, I think it was that, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was that Vic explosion or Vix Mergeddon or whatever they nicknamed it. Right. Didn't that come after that? It did. Right. So we kind of had a setup like that right now. All right. So to break it down, you're talking about um, flows and positioning supportive up until. January expiration. Right, right. You would need Pink Panther. That's a good point. Uh, so you would need, you know, I guess it only takes a couple of days. No, it doesn't take long to get Pink Panther. Let's see. What are we looking like here? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, you know, this, this breather right here did wonders, right, Hussein? Otherwise, you'd be very close. You'd be very close. So, you know, and, and January Expo is next Friday. So this week and next week. 
the expiration, January monthly expiration? I think so, right? Or is it, no, it's two, three weeks? 21st. So this week, next week, oh my God, that's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah. So yeah, we could definitely add Pink Panther. Uh, but listen, even more than that, we don't we don't even want that again unless you're sitting long right now. You know, with a stop, a little bit of a cushion, and letting it rip. For those of us who want to trade around this, you want days that resemble today in a sense. You know, where you get a dip. Uh, and, you know, you can look for an entry or even more so if we hopefully see some names involved uh, and, and you get some support, you know, because uh, you got you got two things uh, that are really supportive right now. One, you have the flows that are, are being front run. Um, you have gamma, right? You got that dip buying mechanism in effect. Gamma, just enough positive, not too hot, not too cold, where they're likely going to suck up every dip unless we get hit with a nuke. And you have the McElliott point of exposure that needs to be put back on if VIX stays here or even more so rolls over, right? So we're talking about this here, okay? Those systematic funds, okay, trend following systematic funds did all the buying into this. Okay, they had to ramp up their exposure to equities because VIX was trading at a lower price and there's no thought process. They automatically, systematically have to add exposure at certain levels. Okay, they had to do the same thing but take off exposure into this, okay? So everything they put back on here, they kind of went from short to max long. All the long, they spit up into this little pullback we had here, okay? So now they're putting back on that, equ that equity exposure, right? And that's what McElliott's talking about now in regards to the amount of buying, right? We talk about the adjective he has been using uh, when he first talked about this a couple of weeks back, stunning, um, because they're, they're pretty big numbers. I think he mentions them again. I always, when I, I always have trouble finding it when I want to show you guys, but I'm almost positive he mentioned again here. You know? Yep, here it is, okay? Uh, so you had 16 billion of fresh buying in global equities. This was yesterday, right? 15 billion on top of the 800 million US. 3 billion from the volatility controlled funds. So the bottom line, guys, you, um, you, got, you got buying that needs to come in. You know, buying that needs to come in right where we're trading right now and if VIX happens to trade lower, right? And VIX looks sick. And think about it. You're coming, you're coming towards the end. Like Omicron's already factored into this market, right? We've come to that conclusion. Not just today, a week ago, two weeks ago, right? So now the next bit of news where players are going to want to ramp up some vol exposure is into the Fed. And the Fed is after expiration, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So you got some time till then. And, you know, if this here sits down here at the least, or God forbid, melts, um, they gotta, they gotta ramp up their exposure in equities. So you have that force of buying coming in on top of some very accommodative gamma exposure, right? 
And positioning, right? We've been talking about this is not full, right? That's your worry right now if, if it wasn't what it is, right? That positioning is full and you have no buyers, but, or you have supply. We, we don't have that, right? We don't have that, okay? Exposure has been minimal for a while. Oh, tomorrow's said minutes. Tomorrow's said minutes. That's, um, so that's what they've been talking about their last meeting, past tense. Shouldn't be anything market moving out of that. You have the, you have the Fed meeting, which is a big one uh, coming up after the uh, at Jan expiration. Because uh, right, right now the market's pricing in the Fed raising raising rates in March, Jan 25, 26. So a couple of days after. Thanks, Matt. All right. So again, not important to absorb all this. Just a general premise. Okay. There is nothing in the way right now. Again, barring. Famous last words, right? Barring something that comes out of left field a la the day after Thanksgiving, okay, like Omicron, all right? But barring that, there's nothing in the way to, you know, throw things off whack. And what I mean by throw things off whack is a lot of money that needs to be put to work. Well, a new variant, yeah. Listen, we can't, you can't factor in, right? I, like I'm conservative enough right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can't swing trade any individual names. I've been like that for quite a while. The, I can't get any more conservative than, than I am right now, right? I don't want to be any more conservative than what I am because positioning is not full, okay? The only reason right now that I'm gun shy swinging names is because the action in names sucks, right? I mean, honestly, it's been looked at like, for me, a losing proposition. So I'm not just gonna do something just to do something and, and lose my money, right? If I feel that way. So aside from that, you know, based on sentiment positioning, all the other stuff we look at, uh, things are pretty good out there. Things are pretty good out there, okay? We just need, the signal from the smart money buying to say, okay, listen, we're, we're, we're putting on some serious risk in individual names. They're not doing that. They're putting it on in the indexes. They're putting it on in TQQQ. They're putting it on in Apple, right? They're riding the momentum in the Teslas of the world, all that shit, you know, and you can count on one hand, right? Health and names like that. They're not really taking sticking their necks out in individual names because of all the stuff around us. I mean, right? Shop, yeah, the, these growth names, that's why they're dangerous, Damien, you know? Listen, sometimes you don't see the risk. You never see the risk in front of you at that time when you're ready to buy something, right? But that's why you got to factor these things in, right? The risk to buying a shop or and a firm or any of these sexy growth names is what happened today. Uh, UPST, all those names, okay? Uh, you know, the reason every time you guys brought up one of those names, I like those names just as much as you guys do. I love growth, all right? I love growth. But when you have the risk of now, you know, you had players caught long, off the recent rally, right? Or coming out of the summer. And now all of a sudden rates start to creep higher and you get just automatic algo selling in these things. This is the, that was the risk. You get caught in something like this. Now, a lot of you guys have been trading these names, swing trading them while I haven't and been making money in them because up till today, that risk didn't show up, right? Okay, but this was the this was your risk today, All right? This was your risk, and like I told you guys, listen, if you got caught in 
a swing play, right? You, you went to go swing trade a firm, right? And it's a loser. That's fine. The losers come in the best of conditions, okay? But remember what we were talking about. What about if you got caught with a basket of growth names and upside calls right now? Right? Remember we were talking about that? What about if you got aggressive off the recent dip, a recent dip in these growth names, right? You stuck out your neck and you know, now you're sitting five, six positions deep, all of these growth stocks. You, you know, you're, you're not too happy. That hurts. Right. And Q, you know, I'm not trying to make you feel any worse if it's you, but you know, that's right. It's not new. This is what we've been talking about. No, I know, I know. But this is what we've been talking about on these webinars. You know, again, guys, I get thrown in the perma bull camp, right? So when you hear me, ooh, and a an nine and a bit cautious and conservative, it's because I see serious risk out there. And again, it doesn't mean it's going to show up now, but you have to weigh that risk and not just look at the reward because when it does show, it hurts. It can really hurt. You know, but that that's, and it's not just growth. Every across the board, swing trading individual names. You know what I mean? There's been risk. That's been the problem. You know, that's been the problem. For, for individual names, Q, like I think, see, Price action wise, Q, they've been, they're all overdone. Okay. But you can't, we can't make that statement. Okay. Cause here's why you look at like, or any of these names you guys like. Okay. Okay. Like shop, right? You say, oh, you know, took a nice beating, nice bull. When you scroll back the chart, okay, you see this? Okay. Now, Positioning may have thinned out here, but you have a lot of money along this name. You know what I mean? So we you can't make that you can't make that argument. So if you're looking back and you see this, you can't make that argument. That's what's so difficult about these names that have been hot. S E, another one, perfect, right? Or uh, even this one that crashed before all of them, Teladoc, right? Like you could have made the argument this was overdone. I know people who thought it was overdone. <laughs> we know one lady who knows a lot of shit who thought it was overdone, right? But when you see this, okay, this is never easy trying to find the, the overdone part here, you know? And you know, the, that's where the the best way you got to look at the group as a whole and we need to see signs of a bottom as a whole not just in one name right like we were saying we want to see we we want to see them come in and tattoo a bunch of these names and not just buy them one morning when they are squeezing but buy them like they can't buy enough of it over the course of weeks you know, that's the type of support we want to see show up in, in these type of names because, like I said, the, this already exploded, already hatched. Now, you can trade them, right? You can trade them, but so many people want to buy them and catch that big move. Why? Because they're looking at this. But this is more bad than good. You know, more bad than good. Yeah, he, you listen, you had you had a lot of bearishness coming out of the summer in these growth names. You remember? Nobody wanted to touch them. Okay. But that rally coming out of the summer, you know, got a lot of people believing in them again. I mean, hell, some of these names went to new highs, if not close. You know, so now it's washing them out again. Oh, so it's more, and it doesn't even mean there how much there's a lot more pain involved to the downside. 
there's probably more time involved than anything else. More time. You know, more time. But, you know, there'll be a day um, where these things are back in play again, even if it's for a couple of months, where we can find a way to make some money. And, you know, you know who knows how long it'll be till they find a bottom bottom. Yeah, and all that. And, and that's the other thing, right? That you got to keep reminding yourself, okay? One name may look better than the other, but if they're all, if they're, if the majority of them are selling, you're asking a lot for you to make money in the one name that looks okay, right? Yeah, and, and that's the problem, Presley. That's the problem. One name may look appealing, but what happens you run into a day like today where the machines are just slamming the sell button across the group, right? And let's be honest, this has been going, this didn't just show up today. We've been talking about this, you know, for the last few weeks, how every time these names pop, the sellers come out of the woodwork, right? Every time they're green, you see them going red before you blink. So, you know, that, that price action's telling. That price, act, that price action's telling. Where the opposite now, right? The opposite you're seeing in some of the reopening names. The news is negative and they're having trouble selling. You know what I mean? You're starting to see constructive signs on the other side uh, on that reopening trade. So, now, hopefully, that's the start of a trend here, you know? And then what's going to happen, guys, is this, you know, eventually, they're going to sell off enough over a short amount of time. Maybe it's we're close to it now, okay? And players are going to want to own the cyclicals, and you're going to get an everything rally. We may need a pullback before that happens. Right, we may need a little shakeout. All right, but you get that everything rally off bullish or bullish sentiment signals, as we usually talk about, right? In where you can play these things, but to to come in and play them, you know, in the middle of nowhere on any given day is is dangerous. You know, for swing trading purposes, it's really dangerous. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. China names. That's another. That's another group. People trying to catch a bottom, they scare the living piss out of me. I mean, eventually they got a bottom. They have to bottom. I just, I'm being honest. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sound like a tough guy and tell you, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy it. You know, I don't care. I'll be underwater. The China names, they've scared the shit out of me for quite a while now, and they continue to scare the shit out of me. Yeah, Q, what you gotta do if you're gonna do that? Exactly. You. Do whatever you do, do not buy common. Do not buy the equity. Whatever you do, you buy leaps and little at a time, you piece in. Only into weakness. <laughs> Only into weakness, Q, honestly. Only into weakness. You know, and you'll, I believe, like you'll get with those leaps, you'll get a rally that you'll get rewarded on those leaps. You know, you'll get a rally at some point, but you can't, you can't get cocky and think you're going to nail the bottom to the tick. PRC. Who's that? Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ronchero, that, that whole country scares the shit out of me. These stocks are just paper here. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. That's what that's what scared the living poop out of me in these names for a, a long time, guys. You know? And then after doing what they just did, they just proved they can change the rules of the game whenever they want. You know? They can pull the plug whenever they want. And you think you own something here. You don't own jack shit. You own a piece of paper here. Yeah, luck and coffee. That, that was the dagger. Right? That was the dog. I heard. That's why Baba rallied today. Right, Munger? Now, you know, Baba is supposedly the stud of them all, right? I can't buy it. 
good for Munger, but I can't buy it. You know, I can't buy it. And then, yeah, you know, it's just like Ron Charo's point. You know, it there's like why do I do I need to? There are American stocks that you know have been destroyed that I'd rather roll the dice in. Like why? Uh, yeah, what was the Munger line? Bitcoin is what? It was classic. Remember, uh, he made fun of Bitcoin. He, he came out with a famous line like Bitcoin is, uh, or Bitcoin players he was making fun of. They made a t-shirt. That was at like, uh, that was like a Bitcoin 5,000. And then the, rat poison, that's it. Rat poison. <laughs> The guy's 100, 150 years old, Munger. Yeah. So, but listen, I can tell you again, we've had the same conversation for a while here, right? What I'm doing, I, I'm, tra I'm trying to trade individual names intraday. That's primarily what I've been doing, right? Uh, if we get bullish sentiment signals, maybe, maybe I try to give. Uh, the equity a little bit of room and hold it an extra day or two for follow through. Um, that's off bullish sentiment signals, you know. But other than that, I've been I've been you know focusing on the indices. Um, and again, with bullish sentiment signals, you know even more so. And that goes for day trading and um, even considering holding anything overnight. Yeah, I mean. Am I okay with it? Like the only thing I'm okay with is Drunken Miller was buying it. But other than that, Q, it's just in that out of favor camp right now. You know, it's in that out of favor camp. Where's the bottom? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yep. You know, Korea and China are two different things. They, you got a whole different ball game there. You know, not to say they could be cooking the books for all we know when you hear about that, but, you know, it's not in the, in that China category where they're changing the rules, you know, and all that headline risk. Um, there was some action in DIA. Here's the problem when you get into days like today with the ETFs, you get pair trading. You understand? So what they do is they buy DIA calls and they hedge it with QQQ puts, Right. So, for you know, if we just play one end, you know what I mean? You're kind of defeating the purpose. So you don't want to get too wrapped up, again, for swing trades in, in trying to take advantage of that stuff when the action's like it is, right? The best, if you're looking to make a play on these index ETFs for swing trading purposes, just do it off bullish sentiment, you know? Just do it off that. You'll you'll trade less, so you'll get chopped up less, and you'll see that the majority of your best entries um, are going to come from that. Yeah, I played for it. Yeah, did you play for it? You played the calls, Mike? Oh, you didn't. I've been playing Ford. I think I told you guys this. I know. I've been playing Ford. I can't tell you how many times I played Ford over the last month or two. Every time we caught action, I played Ford for a day trip. Now, as you guys know, a lot of those times, you know, it was useless, right? It was up a little and then stopped like a clock and just sat there all day. Uh, but I played day trading ones. I played Ford and GM because they've been the only names catching action on that cyclical side. Almost every time they catch flow. Now, again, I'm playing the equity though, you know? So it's a little different, right? The equity, I got to stop. It doesn't move or I get stopped, game over. But today where they tattoo it, you know, you make some money. A um, couple guys in the room played the Ford options and did well today. I think it was the Ford options. But look at this. Common... And April 19 calls that what that you sold today, Warrior? 
Oh, you didn't sell. So you're still holding it? So what? Why, this thing's got to go down tomorrow? Yeah, all right. Yeah, so what? Strong enough to, to give it a little bit of a lease. That's fine. You got some cushion. You know, this is a huge move today. This is a huge move. That's a nice hit, Ed. That's a nice hit. You still got them. You know, GM too, right? There's another name. But there, there were a couple of you guys like cat. Like I'm waiting for flowing cat. There's been um, leap buying. Where's tree? She knows because she reminded me of it. Um, in this caterpillar, that was the best looking action in leaps. Right, exactly, Q. Exactly, 2023. Um, but you know what? When this thing is in favor, this thing could get some real nice action. You know, real nice action. So let's see, it could still come in. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying even more so now to pay attention on the dips, okay? There'll be dips. So you got Caterpillar now, let's say tomorrow up a little bit. And then, you know, over the course of the next week, maybe flags here, something like that. And then we see sweepers hit that. You know, that's the kind of thing you, um, you want to look for here. And that'll also be a clue that these things are ready now. You know, these things are ready. Because again, look, they haven't been ready. And guys, right? If you look back on it, it's always in, in hindsight, it makes sense. But you had a really healthy move. And this just looks like normal digestion here, no? Right? Considering how bad China has been, uh, COVID, all this stuff. You know, this thing, it's been healthy digestion here. It's just time. You know, you don't want to sit through that if you don't have to. But, you know, now you want to start looking to see if this thing, if they support this thing. You know what I mean? If, if sweepers come in and support it. Because like I said, there, there hasn't been a lot of stuff uh, that they've, they've supported, all right? We were talking about this on the Sunday webinar. You got the hotels. And, you know, they weren't an easy hold, these hotels. You had to sit through a lot of chop and agita, right? You got the Yakman sweepers and these things, they always show up. You know, you, you got to rack your brain to come up with these names. We were trying to do it Sunday, right? Over the last couple of months, there's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of them. But look at the price action for good reason. You know, we should be thankful there's not a lot of them. Um, you know, you got these things you guys were liking too, right? I would keep an eye on these things here, off pullbacks. All right, they support all these things. This Live Nation, that was another one that we were talking about, right? Every dip they buy. So that, the good thing about the cyclicals is you, unlike the Teslas of the world, you get, you know, you get these, secondary and third entries, you know? Um, another name that I usually like to look for flow when they're rotating into these things, URI, United Rentals. You guys know this, right? Stud. And this is a sick move. Sick move. So now you got a little breather here, healthy. And very quietly, you know what's another group that just prints money, nobody talks about them, even us, these rails. I think the last time I actually made a nice hit on these rails was like 2016. These things, forget it. You get a pullback in these things, it's like printing money. CSX, all these things. ODFL, that's another monster. They don't catch a lot of flow. That's that's the problem with these names. Energy, right? These energy names look healthy. You know, they scare me as always energy names a bit, but they look good. Especially the ones that they keep buying. Devin, I think that was new highs today. Look at this Devin. Yep, Fang 2. That was another one they hit pretty hard. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
No, it's a whole part of the market, guys, that you know we're not we're not used to playing, but that's that's where they're buying, that's where they're buying dips. Oh, that's cow, that's huge. So you like that? That's I wish you could help me with that because I, I got serious problems doing that. Oh, uh, they they hit this thing hard. You're talking about big buying this thing. Big buying. Uh, well, what are other names that have been catching? What other names? You guys looking at any other names on uh, Viacom? Yeah, look, right? A little life there. Yep, Viacom, the, the other one too. Discover, what's the symbol there? That? Yeah, Disca. Jeez, you know, what, you know what? We talked about this, right? This is what ruined it. Look at this debacle. Look at this. Oh, uh, it came out today. Hold on. Let's look at that quick. We've been so focused on McElliott and uh, the Goldman guy. Hold on. Where is it? Uh... Oh, by the way, I keep I keep forgetting. I, I think I'm talking to just members, and you guys look for certain updates. Here's another thing, right? Hedge funds. Okay? Remember, this was a concern we had, right? That they bought that first dip. But they found a way to shake them out. You know? They find a way to get them out of there. So, like, this is done now. You know what I mean? We, we were, well, I was concerned that this was going to weigh on markets. That, that was the risk, weigh on equities. Now, you know, probably weighed on individual names more, believe it or not. Remember all the de-risking we saw in all the high multiple stuff from hedge funds. So that's what they were selling. Um, but, you know, the market just went into little sideways chop. Right? And now you got hedge funds with no exposure, nothing as a whole. You know? So what's the market going to do? We're going to get a little pullback? Bring it. Where are they going to go neck, neck short? Bring it. You know what I mean? Bring it. That's what we want. So that's a headache that's out of the way. Oh, you guys are talking about this Goldman thing. I thought you meant the client fun flow today. Here's the Goldman uh, client positioning. Look at this. Now, I'll tell you, okay, we talk about pain trade, right? A lot on these webinars. That's what we like to look for, okay? The pain trade as a whole this year, I, in what I'm seeing, is risk on. You know what I mean? Is risk on. So, and what I mean by your risk on is, Bullish on the economy. Yeah, it's been everybody's positioned defensively. So that's the pain trade that could come out of this. Oh, but you see, look, market, you know, you got people talking about like uh, everybody's exuberant. No one's positioned like that. You know, and where all the exuberance was living, they got smoked out. It's gone. You know what I mean? It's gone, right? All those new traders on Twitter that were doing cartwheels, they're in all these growth names that got obliterated. They're not buying URI or UNP. You know, so 
I mean, we're, we're more than likely closer to the end of them being smoked out, but they could use a good beating because they get cocky after a week of a rally. They get cocky again, you know? Uh, here's what I thought you guys were asking about. Well, this was last week. Selling across the board. Okay. From all clients, hedge funds, institutions, and retail. And um, here's the same thing that Goldman was pointing out. January. So that, that's the rationale, right? That because of this, okay, because of what we just looked like looked at on the last two charts, Goldman positioning and that hedge fund chart, right? Because there's no exposure there and the market didn't come in as they hoped, you're going to see something like this. And that's what's being front on right now. You know what I mean? That's what's being front on. There's nothing more to it. That's it. That's what's being front run. You know, and because of all the, it's not like the, the negative stuff out there is not real, right? Omicron's real. It's all real. You know, that's why this market hasn't been stronger than it even is. That's why individual names have been, and breadth has been so poor because there are real issues out there, but everybody's concerned about them. It's not like nobody's paying attention to them. Um, what was I gonna show you guys? I just, oh, I wanted to show you guys. Let me see if I, uh, yeah. All right, so that, that's the biggest the biggest thing out there right now is that a big money is, is coming in this month. Right, so like Hussein said, we may end up in a Pink Panther situation come the Fed meeting after uh, expiration. All right. So again, no nuke, right? No exogenous Omicron variant that scares the living shit out of everybody. Um, and again, that, that lasts a couple of days. But I'm saying, if barring anything like that, now to January expiration, uh, the playbook is for a grind higher, right? Here's what Spy Gamma looks like. This will probably head here come January expiration and look like this, okay? And then come after Jan Expo, after a lot of these fun flows are factored in and we start to see them, um, yeah, you have the risk of something like that, you know? And depending on how hot, Sentiment is positioning, who knows, right? Could be even worse, but we can't we can't look at that yet. You know, you have you have the uh you have a window for something like that, right? And likelihood gamma creeps higher like this, right? In the meantime, you're likely gonna see all these little dips be supported. You know, how big of an extension that uh, it's tough. You know, it's hard. It's hard to know that it's impossible because you don't. You know, is there going to be negative news that they're going to have to buy the dip, or are they going to chase? Right? Is there going to be positive news that 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 they need to FOMO up and chase? You know, there's there's no way to predict that. It's as you go, we determine that. Um, but just know that these these fades and dips they should be well supported. 
They should be well supported for the time being for a couple of weeks. Okay, but that, that's what's in play right now. Anybody have any questions on any of that? Pretty self-explanatory, no? Oh, here's what I was looking for. Can I blow this up? Of course not. All right, so this highlighted line right here, I posted it on Twitter, my regular Twitter too. Um, and as trailing Orval uh, continues to mean revert, we expect to see ongoing substantial vol control buying of US equities on SPX daily change. Oh, so here's another important thing I, I mentioned yesterday in the note to, to members, right? The best case scenario for this to play out the right way is what we've been seeing the last couple of days. A market that grinds higher is choppy, but does not extend. You understand? If you do get this FOMO chase, what's going to happen is you're going to see VIX trade higher with equities. You understand? And you're basically going to got you're going to have everything heat up at once. And if everything heats up at once, McGillie talks about a one percent or greater upside in SPX, you got that systematic fund crowd becomes sellers into that. You understand? So you want the buying to come in, right, in pieces as scheduled. And that's where you'll see this play out the best. And I think what happened today is likely to more help that than hurt it. Right, because you're not, you know, S and P 500 now is heavily weighted tech too. So you're not getting that FOMO case. Or if this, you're getting the opposite. All right, so you're getting buying out of the cyclical half, and the tech half is a little dicey right now. Make sense? Right, so it's likely not going to be that smooth, but you know it shouldn't affect us as much because you know we kind of have an idea of what we're looking for, right? Uh, beyond, yeah, that's that's a tough cookie. You know these names, guys. I know a lot of you guys aren't. Um, aren't familiar with, pay, you know, even looking at things like the numbers and fundamentals of a company. Right now, names that are bleeding red like this are getting smoked. You understand? Names that, are do, that look like this and their chart looks like this, those days are over. I'm sorry to tell you, over. It's up five bucks. It'll probably be red tomorrow. <laughs> right? They they probably they probably popped it after hours to get some people to get sucked in so they can sell it right into their ass tomorrow. Kentucky Fried Chicken can buy as much chicken as humanly possible and this company is probably still going to bleed out red. No? It's not helping them. But th that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. And it's very simple to look at, guys. You know, when I... Here I go into my rocking chair. When I got into the game, I used to always look at that. Now, you know, nobody looks at it. Like, you... Look at trading view. It's very easy. You hit this, and you see red all over the place. Minus, 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 minus. It's a tough trade, especially now. You know, and the story means nothing. The story means zero. You understand? Very simple. The story. I don't want to hear how many chickens they're going to sell in the year two thousand eighty. You understand? 
the stories, they only, people only pay attention to the stories in bubbles. You know, and, and that's what you're going to see. We've been seeing it. The names that push out these chunky green numbers, right? Names like that, they buy every dip. That's what's going on right now. <laughs> I never understood that meat anyway, pal. But that's what's good. That's what's that's what's going on right now. Very simply put, you know, and listen, it doesn't have to be a behemoth. Right? It doesn't have to be Home Depot earning four bucks a share a quarter. You know, we're we're going to get to a point. Even small caps, if they're if profitability is there in sight, right? They have an explosive growth rate, even if their profits aren't that big, there's going to be a time where it's going to get noticed and you're going to see the price action accordingly, you know? But when they're bleeding out money with no revenue, those things, they, they don't, that, that's, they never do well in markets. It's only in bubbles they do well. Only in bubbles. You know, only in bubbles. And, you know, we went, we went through a period, obviously, it popped in March where they're, you know, SPAC names. Nobody even knew what these companies were, and they were tripling. That doesn't last, guys. That doesn't last. You know, but don't get tied into the story, because the story means God's on goal. All right, anybody have any uh, other questions? on the playbook or anything else before uh, we pack it up. All right, so keep an eye out for uh, clues out of the flow. No, no Sharpie update yet. Um, I posted the data's out, but I think the day through the indicator. Are. So here's some of the breakdown. It breaks it down a little differently than we like. <laughs> they, these guys, they go on vacation, forget it. The holidays, they don't want to be bothered. You know, but I don't see any major changes here from what I see. You know, I don't see any major changes. But I'll check it out. As soon as I see, uh, see it updated, I'll post. All right, but I'm looking. All right, guys. So again, cyclicals and um, you know the overall market, mostly S and P five hundred. You know, look to take advantage of dips, and like I said, pay attention to the sweeper activity and the individual names in that cyclical camp, because um, maybe it's the start of some serious rotation. You know, and there'll be some nice upside in those things. Yep, always a pleasure. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy and healthy. All right, we'll do it again next week. The rest of you, I'll see you mañana. Have a good night, everybody.